Like, so what's if your I was sauce? at Buffalo Wild Wings, yeah, we're recording. Are we recording? So if stuff? I was at Buffalo Wild Wings right now, I would order their like their their loaded tots. Have you had those? They have tots that they load with <laughs> stuff. They like no, have like I, all kind of like cheese and bacon and stuff on top of the tots, and it's like they're they're I mean just magnificent. Hey guys, so today on the podcast, we're talking about church planters and new church plants popping up on every corner, just like your local Starbucks. So Kevin, tell us more about the topic that we're talking about today. Today's episode is called, let's say it together. I'm just kidding. Today's episode is called, oh, look, another church plant. So, you know, we, we do, we work with a lot of church plants um, at, at Yellow Box. We have since 2013. And, it's, and actually, even before that, when we were like, I mean, I've been a part of a ton of church plants myself personally. I know you guys have as well. And so you get to see the ins and outs. I mean, really, we, we say all the time at Yellow Box, we say church planters are a little bit called and a little bit crazy. And it takes a mixture of both to do it well. And so we're going to go into some information here about church planting. And we want you to kind of view this in the proper light, like, so we're going to set this up, but you know, so you're thinking of planting a church. That's awesome. That's great. Godspeed. Let's do it. We can help you. But being excited about planting a church and actually getting people to show up are completely different things. And it takes being aware of your surroundings in the United States. There are some 375,000 churches um, and 70% of those churches have a hundred or less attendees on a weekly basis. And so, um, and over the past 20 years, the median attendance size has actually decreased from um, it's some 50% from 137 to 65 attendees in weekly worship services. And so that's a stark difference from what we just talked about with, with Nick's church and MJ's church and the churches that, I mean, you know, the churches that we work with, a lot of the churches we work with, um, even from a church launch perspective, start at around 200 to 400, 500 people, right? And so, and then they grow within the course of five years to maybe 1,500, 2,500, 3,500. So those, that might be what we think churches look like in America, but that's not the reality for the majority of America. Um, recent studies have also shown that practicing Christians have dropped almost 50% since the year 2000. And the church membership, uh, sorry, and the church membership in the United States fell below 50% for the first time in eight, eight decades. Um, so like in 80 years, church growth has been, or membership in the local church has been on a steady pattern and it dropped for the first time in 80 years. And that's not something that we should just go, ah, it was this, I mean, it was the pandemic, it was whatever. Obviously there's a lot of factors that lead to that, but the majority of people who, who are looking at this data cite division and hypocrisy as a primary reason for that departure. Um, Andy Stanley actually recently posted an article and he talks about five reasons why people are leaving the local church. And I mean, this is, you know, I respect him. He's kind of in a very, like a very stoic figure in the local church and has been pretty steady with his messaging for his entire existence. He hasn't, changed it or ebb and flowed with what's going on in the world. And so he said, um, the number three reason they found is that people leave the local church because of a bad church experience where members prioritized defending viewpoints over people. And I think that sums up, you know, a lot of what we've seen over the past decade in the local church is that we've, we've made things the main things that aren't the main thing, right? Like, it's kind of like, this is, this has become more important to us than people. Like we're called to reach people, but what, what's more important to us isn't actually people. What's more important to us is this viewpoint and whatever that viewpoint is, it could be on any side of an aisle, but that viewpoint becomes the main thing. And so I don't want to sound doomy and gloomy, um, but this information matters. If you're thinking of planting a church, you need to know this information. If you're on a church launch team, you need to know this information. If you're thinking about, you know, how to market your church, this information matters. Um, being brave enough. Yeah. 
or better, reach, yeah. or better reach your community for where you're at right now. Yeah. I mean, listen, the climate, the cultural climate has changed. 2020 brought a whole lot of change in a whole lot of different ways. And so there's a lot more division and hypocrisy that we're finding in the church. Like I felt like the, you know, this is like the COVID talk, but you know, COVID brought everybody together for a short period of time. And then when it spit us all out, the spectrum became wider, but it also grew distrust uh, amongst people because churches sounded differently and looked differently than they did before. And so knowing that that climate has changed, if you are planning a yeah. church, you have to be aware uh, of, of the church in your city. What's the spiritual climate? What's the spiritual temperature in your city as you plant? And, um, and you know, uh, we can have opinions, but to Kevin's point, the data yeah. doesn't lie. The data is not biased. It, it data is data, right? And so it's up to us to kind of process that and, and accept kind of the reality of our, of our communities, wherever, wherever they're at. And then, really be prayerful and spirit led in how are we going to plant? How are we going to talk about our church? How are we going to reach the felt needs of our community? And what is most important? Because if anything else in this season, it's okay for it to look different yeah. than it did before. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it's sound different. Yeah. I'm not saying change the message. I'm saying it's okay. for. Well, I think, I think what, I mean, the message is, the you know the, what message too right what message matters is it the message that we're against something or the message that we're for something and i think there's there's a way that we can like you know we can position ourselves if you look back at, at the gospel and you look back at the new testament you look back at what jesus talked about like he was presenting himself as for these things those things happened to be the antithesis like of what a lot of people had built their religious structure on in the past, right? So he flips a lot of messages on their head. Um, for example, turn the other cheek, right? That was not, that's not a thing you you would do. Like he talked, he, he was, he was pre presenting his message, his view as like the flip side of the, the religion that a lot of people have grown up in. And I mean, even literally, if you think about the flipping of the tables, like he, he that's kind of the message he did. And so I think that we, we should focus our, our ourselves on that and go, okay, what is it that, how can I unite people rather than divide them? How, how can I bring hope rather than hate? How can I broadcast, um, you know, life? How can I broadcast these things in such a way? And so, you know, you're taking, if you're planting a church or you're on a church plant team, you're taking the first plunge, which is being brave enough to take that step. The second is knowing how to break through the noise, yeah. the white noise. And so you're stepping in as a modern day church planter, you're stepping into a minority of builders. Only 18% of churches that exist today were planted after 1990. Think about that. So, so before wow. only 18% of churches that exist right now have been planted since 1990. So the median founding date of churches in America is 1950. And we haven't moved the needle in over a quarter of a century even with all the changes we've done. We, we've built mega churches. We've created, you know, incredible ways to use technology. We've gotten super creative. I mean, church branding didn't exist in 1950, right? But, yeah. So we haven't moved the needle since then on how we're actually impacting communities. And it's actually, our numbers are going backwards. And so, so there's that, that matters. Your church plant matters but you're walking into a community where you are the most excited person about your church plant. Your community, the people on your launch team are the most excited people about your church plant. The people you're planting to statistically could care less. And so we want to talk to you a little bit today about yeah. how to break through that white noise, what it means to focus yep. on a message that is addressing felt needs in the community that is bringing hope and, 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 and how, yeah you know, we've found to create breakthrough in that area. Breakthrough. Yeah. So I think that like focusing more on the hope side versus the hate side, because there's a lot of hate you can get online and see and read a lot of hate coming from a lot of churches uh, towards church from the church. So if you can stay hope filled, that's a win. If you, uh, the other thing that I think is kind of new 
um, is because of the media and because of everything that we're hearing and a lot of just churches being in the news, there that distrust is there. And so there's actually trust that needs to be won back that there's a little bit of an uphill battle that a lot of church planners are just going to have to face that maybe church planners 20, 30 years ago would not have had to face just because of the notoriety of some of the things that we're hearing and reading on the news. And so you need to factor that in to how you talk about your church, how you um, market yourself, like you're actually there to earn trust. And, it, and let's not just assume that it's there because people don't know you. So being known, and this is where I think community is even bigger than before. Community has actually become a novelty in some church worlds because we're so used to consuming content and wanting to get our branding out and have our social media and, and consume on YouTube, consume on our websites, on our social media, that like actually getting together and breaking bread, getting together and meeting at a coffee shop and having community is refreshing, but it's also people don't know how to do that. They're finding community online, but the, the, there's a huge difference between having a face-to-face -face conversation, we know this, and then doing what we're doing now, which is a digital meetup. And so, yes, I'm not saying those things are bad. Do the Zoom small groups, do the digital meetups, do all of those things, but also don't forsake the novelty of what does it mean to sit down and actually break bread in the same room and get together. And so think through those pieces, community, hope, and trust, um, as foundational pieces to letting people know who you are. I think the sooner that you lean into those things, the quicker you'll be able to help build momentum in what you're trying to, to quote unquote build. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Even like how you're talking about like the branding, but it's more than just branding, right? Cause like branding to me, it's kind of like that first face that you see. And so like when you walk into a church and you see they have like great branding, like that's cool. But like, have you ever met someone with a pretty face and then tried to have a conversation with them and they're just dull? Like there's wow. no substance there, you or know? They're mean, or they're mean and conceited. Yeah. Or they're mean or they're full of themselves, but they might like visually have like a great, <laughs> you know, vibe or aura. They're dressed cool. They're, you know, it's a good looking face, you know, but the moment you see them, it's like, <laughs> lame, boring, you know, like yep. where's the substance? And so that's the same thing with like the local church. You could have sick branding all day long. You could have cool graphics. You could have all that stuff that draws people in like bait and hooked. But the moment that they sit in your congregation and there's no substance to the word that's being, you know, taught to them or preached to them or spoken to them, there's no community and like things that are going to help them get deeply rooted. They're going to walk away. There's nothing holding them there. Like they'll find another pretty face anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. It's like when you like, how many artists have you guys listened to where their studio albums were banging and then you, you go see them live or they're on the Grammys or something. And you're like, that's what they sounded like. They sound terrible live on the flip side. How many studio, how many times have you listened to a studio album that was great? And then you go yeah. see them live and they're even better. Um, that's the best right? That's the best. And so the idea is that what, what we try to do with churches is to help create an online presence, a digital uh, presence that matches that same energy of who you are, of who, who you, what your DNA is. And, and a lot of church planners are like, yeah, I want to have the sickest, whatever, but it's, it's more than that. It, it really comes down to like, like the creative is just the wrapping paper on who you are, on your DNA, your core values, your mission and all that. And so when the wrapping paper conforms to who you are and really reflects what they're about to get when they experience you, that's actually the best creative, not the creative that makes you look like one thing and then they show up and expect something else. So an example, an example of that would be if you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me start over on that. An example of that would be if you see a church design that is very clean and minimalistic, and you enter into the church lobby and it's chaotic and messy and dirty, then you did not have creative that matched. And so this is why we do our due diligence to discover who you are and, and discover who you're trying to reach and then actually build a creative bridge so that we can accurately reflect what people are gonna get. And here's the thing, if it doesn't match, it, it erodes trust. 
And so when it does match, it was like, I experienced them online and it was dope. I came to church and it was the same energy. And in, in fact, they were better in real life mm -hmm. than I thought they were going to be. <sighs> Man, you just set yourself up to win as a church plan. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the, the thing that we struggle with a lot of times too. We talk about this, Nick, when we're, we're helping build a campaign, it's like, what happens if this works, right? Like what happens if, if this messaging, if this campaign actually works, are organizations ready for that? Right? Are you ready? Are you really, really ready for your wildest dreams of planting this church to come true? Are you ready? Hundred percent ready. Emotionally ready. Prepared with the team ready. Prepared with your systems ready. You know, it's it's the your your job, the church planter, church builder, to make sure that your teams and your processes and your systems and the culture that you are building represent and fall in line with your marketing. Um, and if your marketing works and people show up. You gotta be ready. Your kids checking systems up to par. Do you have a pre-registration enabled? Um, you know, is your guest parking lot system set up so that you can handle influx of traffic? Like all those things matter. And we're not even thinking about that in the same vein we were pre-pandemic. Like these things matter now more than ever because the stakes are higher. Because people have been gone for years. We've had a decline in membership. We've had a decline in attendees. And, and, and so let's say you've done all that work and these people actually decide, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to show up to church <laughs> and they have a bad experience. Yep. That might be the last chance for a long time that they give that experience. They give that chance they, that they decide they're coming and, and check it. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Actually, there is pressure. We understand that. But the reality is. Um, there are ways that you can feel confident and equipped that you've done everything possible and let God take it from there. But it is our job as church builders to do the work necessary to prepare for that. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think to be a church planter today means, you know, you have to understand the weight and the responsibility that you're carrying. Um, you know, you're not just going to be like the cool new kid on the block. It's not like a, oh, well, they'll show up and if they don't like it, whatever. Like Kevin said, I think it's like you are holding that responsibility potentially of someone else coming in and just walking away from the church altogether. And also one thing to consider, um, you know, that I've heard recently about like new church planters is they feel like, oh, no, no pressure, especially I'm planting in an area where there's already a mega church or there's already, you know, a church that's been here for 30 plus years. But like consider everything that happened after the pandemic. There's churches that have been around maybe 30, 40 years that are basically in a way new church plants now. Like the pandemic changed everything. Mm -hmm. It like there was a disturbance in the force, if you will, you know, but I mean, always a fan I, for Star Wars reference, always a fan. Oh, always. If you're not a Star Wars fan, get out. No, I'm just kidding. Please continue to listen. Um, you are welcome. No, but really, um, those, those churches have had to like, whether it's rebranding or just restructuring and reframing the way that they teach and preach and reach their communities, um, that in it, in a way is new church planting as well. So, um, you know, don't feel that, don't go into it thinking like, eh, whatever, there's other churches that can serve them or whatever, you know, things like that. Like it's, it's a heavy responsibility and yes, you should be a place of hope and it should be exciting and fun, but there's, there's more to it than just fun and exciting. There's, you know, there's conviction and there's, there's so much that's going to go along with everyone that you're going to encounter, whether that's going to be new believers, old believers, people who want to be on your team, how you're going to steward those relationships and cultivate a culture there that's going to be able to carry everybody else that comes into those doors as soon as you plant. Well, one thing we can kind of take the last few minutes of this podcast and talk about this because we, we do feel it's important. If you're, if you're planting a church, like we talked about this whole episode is not enough to just be excited about it and think in your head and think like from your perspective, your perspective and your point of view, if you're planting a church and you want to market that launch, um, we found a few things to be true, regardless of location, regardless of the, you know, the city you're in, the culture you're in, um, post pre pandemic, all, like these things still ring true. Um, you know, if you're playing, for example, if you're, if you're kind of, going by the ARC process. We work a lot, we work really closely with the Association of Related Churches and that process that they recommend is a great and tried process. Um, although you have to adapt it to your specific area, 
Um, but one of the things that there's always recommended is, you know, a launch campaign, a launch mailer, that whole thing. But we recommend when you're doing it, if you're, let's say if you're launching and you want to do a campaign for that launch, if your campaign is, hey, we're a new church in town, it's going to fall. It's going to fall flat. If your campaign is, um, you know, the, 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 you know, way overplayed, this piece of mail could change your life. These kind of campaigns that have worked great for different areas aren't going to be a sure sign of success for you. You have to do the due diligence, like Nick was saying earlier, of looking up those demographic studies in your area, finding out what is keeping people up at night. What is their pain point? Formulate a series around that. We recommend launching. First of all, we do recommend launching with a series, not a one-off event. The church launch is great. No one cares more about the church launch than you do. That's gonna, not going to be enough to get someone out of their house on a Sunday, especially post-pandemic where they've been you know, having a longer weekend and hanging out with family and doing cookouts and going to the beach or wherever. You're trying to get mm -hmm. them to up, upset that cycle that they've been in, saying we're another church in town isn't enough to do that. So mm -hmm. if you have a solution. For it, yeah. Gonna, well, and let me just also say that your competition, your competition yeah. is not other churches. Your competition is other things yeah. they could be doing. So like, show well, yeah, me why well, well, you got to be lake. better than the lake. And the other piece of that too is, you know, as I say, you're doing this campaign and it's built around a felt need and it's a series. So you're starting something that has several weeks to it, which creates an expectation and creates a safety net. One of the biggest detractors, one of the biggest reasons people don't attend church is like Andy Stanley said, they, they have a fear. They had a negative experience at a church. So that means they're coming to the door with all of this baggage about expectations. And so if you can set out in advance what they can expect, what are they going to expect the first few weeks of this church? What, what's going to happen? What can, you know, what's the kids services look like? What's the culture look like? What are the topics? Are they going to get to church and like right out of the gate, hellfire and brimstone? Or what are you, are you talking about something that's really going to get them in a situation that they need something that's really keeping them up at night? So we recommend a process for that, which we actually have linked to this podcast episode, a guide of how to build a successful launch campaign. And so we'd love to share that information with you. We, Nick and I, or any of our team members would be glad to hop on a call with you in your church as a planter for free and just talk through, hey, what are your thoughts? What are you doing? Where are you going with it? We think this could work. We think this could not. And I'll give one brief example, working with a church plant, um, you know, we were talk talking on a call and the idea was, hey, we already have it sorted out. We want to do um, a series called This Is Us. And I was like, you mean like the TV show? They're like, well, yeah, kind of, but, you know, inspired by that. Okay, that's great. Well, what are you thinking from a concept, like design perspective? And they're like, well, we actually already have a logo design. They send me the logo. It's literally the logo for This Is Us, the TV show. And I was like, okay, I get that you're really in. You're really into this TV show. And this is the struggle point that you as a leader have to face. What matters most isn't your preference. What matters most is their preference, the people that you're planting to. So if you're personally really excited about a journey, you're personally really excited about this thing, that doesn't mean that it's going to translate. It might be completely mistaken for you launching a church that's really just an ad for a TV series. And that's what this mailer would have done if they had gone forward with it. They would have done a mailer that says, this is us, send it out to 20,000 people. And 20,000 people would have, taught, would have thought that they just got an advertisement for a TV show, not for a new church in their area. So keep that in mind when you're going through this process with your creative team, your preference. It's not that it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter more than the people that you're trying to plant to. So good. I think like what you love and what you think will work may not actually work. And, and they, sometimes they're two different things. Like you could say, I don't love this, but I think this is going to work. Maybe, maybe based on past experience, based on what you think you might know. Um, all I'm saying is just invite more people into that circle and just, and, and get some other input before you start making the big, making these decisions. They're huge decisions. People's eternity are at stake. And we here at Yellow Box, we care about your church plant. We care about your church launch. DM us, send us an email at hello yellow box on Instagram, or you can send us an email. Hello at yellowbox.co. 
We would love to talk through your launch season with you. Or if you're thinking of relaunching or launching uh, or running a campaign to help reach your community, we would love to come alongside and partner with you through this. Thanks again for listening to the Yellow Box Podcast. We'll see you guys soon.